Hello and welcome to Study IQ. I am your friend Rahul Saigaonkar. Let's continue our discussion of NCRT Science series. You already know on Study IQ we are running NCRT Science discussion where we have reached class 8. We are doing a chapter by chapter discussion. Already class 6 and class 7 discussion is over. It is there in bilingual format on Study IQ IS channel. If you want to refer to those video lectures, you can always search for a playlist with this particular ID, Rahul SAI222. In fact, I'll be sharing the playlist on this ID on Instagram as well as Telegram channel, which goes with the same identification. You can always refer to those lectures. But today, we are talking about class 8. And as I told you, we are doing a chapter by chapter analysis. We are already done with chapter 1 till chapter 6. In the last lecture, we spoke about combustion and flame. I told you that although by name itself, combustion and flame, the chapter looks very innocent, very innocuous. But we got to know a lot about combustion. How can we stop fires? What is a flame? What are the characteristics of a flame? All these things were discussed. Today, we'll talk about conservation of plants and animals. A very important discussion which is not just relevant from science perspective, we can also connect a lot of this knowledge with our environment preparation through the UPSC civil services journey. So without any delay, let's begin our discussion on conservation of plants and animals. But before that, there is a small notice for all of you. If you're preparing for UPSC civil services examination, then Study IQ is offering the most comprehensive batch, prelims to interview batch. The batches are running at two time. One is at 8 a.m., one is at 6 p.m. So time as per your convenience, if you are a working professional, a 9 to 5 person, then complete your job and join the 6 p.m. batch. In the evening, you can attend the classes regularly. Or if you are a regular aspirant, you can join 8 a.m. batch freshly in the morning. It's starting from 20th May. The evening batch is starting from 25th May. And you know, this is the most comprehensive batch. Why? Because we will be hand-holding you through the prelims examination, through the mains examination, through your interview also. If you clear your prelims examination 2024, the entire expenses of your mains residential program would be taken care of by Study IQ. So this entire program is cost at 29999 only. Do not forget to use my code Rahul Live for maximum discount. You can do it on app as well as the website. Right, let's move on and enter into the chapter. The chapter talks about conservation of plants and animals. Now, conservation of plants and animals. Where do we find plants and animals? We find them in forest. So, this discussion is actually connected to the habitat or the home of plants and animals that is forest. But first thing first, there is a term conservation. Conservation of what? Plants and animals. Many people ask this question. Sir, what is the basic difference between this conservation term and there is another term called as preservation, right? Some basic understanding is needed. If you look at the root word, the root word here is conserve, the root word here is preserve. That's the basic, basic nuance or basic difference between these two. Conserve means what? I already have something. Say, for example, I already have 100 rupees and I want to conserve 50 rupees out of it so that I can use it in future. The same thing applies here. Conservation of forest means I want to conserve the forest that I already have so that the next generation or the future generation would be able to take benefits out of it. Preservation comes when? Preserve. When do I preserve it? When there is already a shortage. I preserve something so that I do not use it extensively. So, conservation means I sustainably use my resources. Whenever I talk about conservation of forest meaning i use my forest sustainably by conserving some chunk of forest so that the future generation can also enjoy the benefits of that preservation means i basically avoid the use or basically avoid human activities in the forest i preserve it say for example there is already an endangered species or endangered plant species or animal species and i do not want any human to interfere there because humans are very dangerous creatures. Whenever they intervene somewhere, say for instance in forest, I told you when we were discussing about forest fires, humans go there by mistake, if they use a matchstick, by mistake, if they light cigarette and then just throw it in the forest, forest fire can occur. And the species which was already endangered, which was low in number, that might get extinct. So I preserve that by not using or by avoiding human activity. That's the basic difference between conservation and preservation. 
here we are going to talk about conservation meaning how to sustainably sustainably use the resources that come from plants and animals now why are we talking about this first of all why we need to talk about conservation because we are actually destroying or we are using these resources at a very very fast rate why because world over we are looking at the problem of deforestation there is already a huge chunk of forest that we have but we are we are utilizing them or we are cutting those forests at a very very fast rate so deforestation is occurring and because of deforestation many adverse consequences are also happening what is the meaning of this deforestation in the name itself you know deforestation means wherever there is forest i am cutting down these forests and whenever i cut down the forests i am cutting down the home of plants and animals but the question is sir why are we cutting down these forests what is the use of that deforestation means breaking or cutting of those forests this picture clearly shows the people are cutting these trees why because i want to use them for my own purposes for my own means it can be anything i may want to create a chair i may want to create a table i may want to construct a house so deforestation is the process of cutting down or cutting the areas of forest for lumber that means i want wood i want to cut the forest and i want to create some other thing i want to go for some sort of agriculture some sort of subsistence crops or i want to cut the forest so that there is grazing there is grass there so that i my animals can graze there right so deforestation can occur for any of the anthropogenic benefits or profits like procuring land for cultivation building houses or factories or making furniture out of wood or even using wood as a fuel so for any anthropogenic means i cut the forest i use the resources out of it that's the meaning of deforestation the question is sir if i go for deforestation then what what will happen are there any adverse consequences of that yes of course there are many adverse consequences of deforestation first of all common sense tells me forest is the house of plants and animals so there is a lot of habitat loss plants would be lost animals will lose their home where will the animal go animal would come in your city that is why we get so many man animal conflicts these days apart from that there is increased flooding why because forests what do they do forests the trees the plants the grasses they hold the soil with their roots and if there are no forests then the water can flow very easily and droughts sorry floods are caused if we cut the forest there is increased drought also it's it's a it's a double whammy for humans on one side there is extensive flooding on one side there is extensive drought meaning i basically disrupt the entire water cycle now once i cut the forest i also cut down so many renewable resources as well if i cut down the forests forests are the lungs of mother earth forests are something which help us in maintaining a balance between oxygen and carbon dioxide but if forests are cut the amount of carbon dioxide or the greenhouse gases they will increase which will lead to global warming which will further lead to problems of climate change we will be entering into a vicious cycle of destruction global warming climate change and problems problems uh, exaggerating because of that apart from that there is destruction of homeland and wildfires can occur if you cut the forest then possibility of wildfires is also more but many a times such simple topics can lead to some complicated options in your mcq for instance if i create a question consider the following statements about deforestation statement 1 says that deforestation leads to loss of habitat yes statement 2 says deforestation leads to depletion of ozone layer is the statement correct see not directly please try to understand deforestation does not directly contribute towards ozone depletion but indirectly yes that is why i told you where your thinking gap and think about the effects of deforestation that's how you have to prepare for the examination also because ncert is the base of your preparation you have to go beyond ncert a step beyond ncert after that foundation is strong ask certain questions that you read in your syllabus is ozone layer depleted because of deforestation not directly but indirectly yes it does contribute to certain extent there is no direct correlation here because ozone depletion is mainly because of the refrigerant that is the chlorofluorocarbons 
that we use right apart from that another question are tribals affected of course the tribals are affected because i wouldn't say it's a habitat for tribals but it's the homeland for them right the see plants and animals they it, it's a habitat for them but tribals also rely on forests for their livelihood some tribes yes for some tribes it is their habitat but for some other tribes forest is a means of their livelihood they rely on the major and the minor forest produce if the forests are gone then the tribals would also be affected yes tribals would be affected the next question does deforestation have any sort of impact on my mission ayush you know we are all we are promoting ayurveda yoga yunani siddha homeopathy all these things so if deforestation continues does it impact these ayush ayush ministries or ayush missions ayush programs somehow of course yes because forests forests are a repository of these ayurvedic proprietary medicines and if forests are gone then where would i get these chemicals or these these uh, uh, medicinal extracts from so it is going to impact somehow on ayush as well right so try to think on these lines it's a very simple concept deforestation cutting of forest for our use there are a lot of ill effects of deforestation but try to connect it through your preparation also right the next step i understood so i have to conserve forest the moral of the story here is what do i have to do i have to go for conservation of forest i have to go for conservation of wildlife so that i protect the plants and animals how do i do it because i already have greenery on mother earth that is why we call it biosphere why earth is biosphere because it has living organisms there is biodiversity there are plants there are animals and other living organisms that is why it is biosphere and we need to protect it the government is already working towards protecting or conserving these forest areas and for that we create protected areas yes you must have heard of these protected areas how do we do it you must have visited them also in your lifetime as a means of your picnic or excursion you must have gone to a wildlife sanctuary you must have gone to a national park you must have also visited a biosphere reserve so right now we protect these areas through means of wildlife sanctuary national park biosphere reserves there is also conservation reserves where wherever people are living or the homeland of the tribals we give directly uh, they are responsible for conservation those kind of reserves are also being created these days but remember protected areas they can be defined through wildlife sanctuary where areas where animals are protected in their own habitat national park again it's a it's a in situ protective measure biosphere reserves we need to understand the differences between them in fact through this ncrt we'll talk about one of the biosphere reserves also we are going to talk about the pachmari biosphere reserve because in this chapter there are certain examples from this but first things first what is a wildlife sanctuary what is a national park and what is a biosphere reserve see wildlife sanctuary it is a means of conservation again wildlife both plants and animals are conserved some species are conserved in their own habitat remember it's a in situ method that means in situ conservation takes place through some sort of manipulative management for example there are bird sanctuaries now near mysore there is ranganathri to bird sanctuary where i go for some sort of manipulative management so that the bird life or the number of birds increase there right so in situ conservation method at the habitat itself by using some manipulative management practices there are national parks also now national parks are are i would say higher protective or higher conservation zones then wildlife sanctuaries where we protect certain species in their habitat and i ensure that there is minimal activity or minimal human intervention there generally in a wildlife sanctuary and in a national park no human resides there, there are homes are not allowed there people cannot construct their houses people cannot construct their buildings etc uh, but there are some people for conservation some people for other activities may be permitted by the chief wildlife warden whoever is there for the national park and wildlife sanctuary they may allow some sort of human intervention human stay but in general in general homes etc are not allowed but when it comes to biosphere reserve remember biosphere first of all biosphere reserve is bigger right is bigger now here i want to conserve remember biosphere means i want to 
create a sphere or I want to create an area or a reserve where living organisms thrive, living beings thrive, be it plants, be it animals, be it humans also. So, what I want to do is I want to create a better relationship between human and their environment. That is why I create the biosphere reserves and it is under UNESCO's man and biosphere program that we create biosphere reserves. All right. Now, in all the three, we do find core areas, buffer areas, restoration zones, cultural zones, but you need to understand the basic differences. Again, please remember the central government, state government, both of them can declare wildlife sanctuaries, national park. We do know that. Again, biosphere reserve comes under UNESCO's list. Now, biosphere reserves, a picture is something like this, where you see there is a core area where I have a forest or a wildlife but I also create buffer and transition zone where there is tourism activity there are also human settlements especially in the transition zones there is continuous monitoring education research which goes on in a biosphere reserve and please remember that in a biosphere reserve there can be national park then can be wildlife sanctuaries in fact the NCRT is also selected a very good example Pachmari Biosphere Reserve. Now, when you talk about Pachmari Biosphere Reserve, which you find in Madhya Pradesh, you will see the Pachmari Biosphere Reserve, what all it contains. The Pachmari Reserve, Reserve Biosphere Reserve contains the Pachmari Sanctuary. There is Satpura National Park in it. There is Bori Sanctuary in it. There is Tawa Reservoir in it. So, I hope now you understand what is the meaning of a Biosphere Reserve. A Biosphere Reserve is a bigger entity where I want to create a sustainable relationship between man and the forests. That's the basic idea. So, a biosphere reserve can contain multiple national parks, it can contain multiple wildlife sanctuaries, it can, it can contain reservoirs, rivers, etc. everything. So, it's a bigger area for conservation, bigger area for building a better relationship between humans and the environment. Now, when you talk about Pachmari, I told you there are different biosphere reserves and uh, different wildlife sanctuaries which are there. In NCRT, there is also one activity that in your district, in your state, in your country, what are the national parks, wildlife uh, sanctuaries and reserves, this uh, list has to be prepared, right? In fact, it's huge number. In fact, there are, the, there are more than uh, 100 national parks. There are about 500 wildlife sanctuaries, more than 500 wildlife sanctuaries. There are 18 biosphere reserves. It becomes physically impossible for you to remember all these. But from exam perspective, from UPSC civil service exam perspective, whichever are in news, in current affairs, on those you need to focus for sure. And whichever are there in NCRT, we'll talk about that. Okay. So as I told you, there are 18 notified biosphere reserves. There are 18 biosphere reserves. Pachmari comes somewhere here in Madhya Pradesh. There is one more reserve in Madhya Pradesh itself that is Achanakmar Amarkantak Biosphere Reserve. Then on the southern side you have Agastamalai, Gulf of Manna, there is Great Nicobar. Nilgiris is a biosphere reserve. Sheshachalam in Andhra Pradesh, yes. There is Run of Kutch. There is uh, Simlipal, Sundarban. In the northeastern side you have Nokrek, Manas, Dibru. There is Kanchanzonga. Kanchanzonga. Very important. Peculiar characteristics can be found in Kanchenjunga Biosphere Reserve. Then there is Nanda Devi and Cold Desert. There are 18 biosphere reserves. Now, 18 biosphere reserves and when you talk about these reserves, you will find multiple national parks and wildlife sanctuaries in it. The number goes 106 national parks, 567 wildlife sanctuaries and there are also 31 marine protected areas in India. Again, there is no need to mug up things but whichever are there in news, you need to focus on them for sure, right? Now, apart from this, the NCID talks about endemic species. We need to understand this. Now, in any biosphere reserve or in any national park or in any wildlife sanctuaries, you will find certain peculiar species of plants and animals. If you find them in one particular area, one particular zone, one particular state, one particular country, we call it endemic. That means they can be found only in that particular area. Those are called endemic species. And you already know what is a species. A species is a group of population which is capable of interbreeding. These species have common characteristics. They interbreed and they have common characteristics. It may be a plant species, animal species, you know that, right? So, endemic species is something that is peculiar to one particular zone 
or a one particular state or a one particular country. For example, we say uh, that uh, that Indian elephants or or the Asiatic cheetahs that we talk about. You do know Asiatic cheetahs are already extinct from India. We have brought African cheetahs and we have now transmigrated them in Kono National Park. So one of our endemic species already got extinct, cheetah. Right? We did not conserve it. We did not preserve it. It got extinct. So we are bringing it from somewhere else. Endemic means we find it in one particular area. Now in the in the Pachmari, we find different kinds of endemic species. We'll talk about that. But whenever these endemic species they are threatened because they are found only in one particular area. So imagine I find something. Say I find a giant squirrel. Say this giant squirrel. It is written here that it is endemic to this particular area. That means the Pachmari Biosphere Reserve area. Imagine I cut the forest here. There is deforestation. Then this giant squirrel, its population will go down. Why? Because its habitat is destroyed. So once its population goes down, then it comes in the threatened category. And that is why we maintain a red data book also. This NCRD talks about red data book. Here you can see Professor Ahmad who has taken children to the Pachmari Biosphere Reserve and to the National Park and Wildlife Sanctuary as well there. He talks about a red data book. This red data book, it contains data of, remember, red data book contains data of both plants and animals which are threatened, which are endangered, whose population is going down because of many factors. It may be because of uh, natural causes or it may be because of anthropogenic reasons particularly deforestation also. This red data book is maintained by an organization called as IUCN, International Union for Conservation of Nature. It is a not-for-profit organization is set up in Switzerland. It, it creates a red list. All right, it creates a red list. Now, this red list, it contains information about species. It can be plants or animals on the basis of information, on the basis of surveys. And if there are enough numbers see for instance if there are enough number then it might be in near threatened or least concern category because there is enough forest enough habitat for it but as soon as the numbers are going down and there is a very high probability of these animals and plants getting extinct they are categorized in threatened threatened areas threatened categories include vulnerable endangered and critically endangered so in your current affairs whenever you are reading newspaper when you are reading stuff ensure that whatever species or whatever organisms plants you read if they are in critically endangered endangered or vulnerable category do make a note of them they become very important for you from exam perspective especially from prelims perspective mcqs can be created on that and if the number further goes down it can be categorized into extinct. Cheetah is already extinct. Some can be extinct in the wild. That means there are some population which are probably somewhere in a zoo or somewhere in a preservation center. Apart from that, regionally extinct. Say for instance, I would say the Asiatic cheetah is uh, regionally extinct from the A South Asian region. In the South Asian region, you do not find any Asiatic cheetah. You find some Asiatic cheetahs in Iran though. But when, it, when we talk about South Asian region, India, Pakistan, uh, Bangladesh, Nepal, etc., you do not find any Asiatic cheetahs here. Some Asiatic cheetahs are there, small in number, in Iran. That is why we have not brought those cheetahs, we have brought African cheetahs. They are not extinct. African cheetah number is quite high, right? That's why we have brought them from Namibia. So, they can be regionally extinct. This is, these are some categories. There is no need to mug up, but whenever something is in current affairs, something is in news, do try to focus on those for sure. All right. Now, there is a very interesting snippet. You can see here, Professor Ahmad says, India also maintains a red data book of plants and animals. A very important thing. Again, from MCQ perspective, you need to note this for your information. The red data book of India, red data book of India, it contains data of animals and plants which are threatened in India. And it is maintained or it is prepared by the Zoological Survey of India and the Botanical Survey of India in collaboration with or under the aegis of Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. They maintain a list only of threatened category that is critically endangered, endangered and vulnerable species. And this list is again 
updated or this list is shared continuously with IUCN, International Union for Conservation of Nature. So, we work, that means the Zoological Survey of India, Botanical Survey of India, it also works very closely with International Union for Conservation of Nature to update this red data book of India also continuously. Right? Now, apart from this, this chapter also contains certain important information, especially about Pachmari, which becomes which becomes very relevant for us from exam perspective. Right? This book mentions about two specific endemic species, endemic species of plants that is sal, sal and wild mango. They are endemic to Pachmari Biosphere Reserve. Apart from that, bison, Indian giant squirrel and Indian giant flying squirrel. Both of them are endemic fauna in the Pachmari Biosphere Reserve. Apart from that, inside the Pachmari Biosphere Reserve, there is already Satpura National Park. In the Satpura National Park, we find finest Indian teak. It is found in these forests. Apart from that, the Satpura National Park is very well known for one more thing. You must have heard about a place called Bhimbedka. If you have read it in your history, ancient history, you must have heard of Bhimbedka. Bhimbedka has ancient painting, right? Prehistoric paintings. Now, these are prehistoric paintings found in the rock shelters or inside the Satpura National Park. Please remember. Satpura National Park has many evidences of prehistoric human life in the jungles or in the forest. The primitive life has been depicted here through rock pictures or other, other images that are found inside a cave, inside the shelters where you can see figures of animals, men fighting. In fact, I will show you a picture of that also. Not there in NCRT but from outside the Bhimbeka paintings or the Satpura National Park painting, something like this. These are the rock shelter paintings inside a cave. So, prehistoric painting evidences are also found in Satpura National Park. Bhim Betka comes here itself. Alright. Now, that is how you interlink your information. From NCRT or history knowledge, try to interlink. Right. Now, we started our discussion with deforestation. You must have a question. Sir, if there is deforestation, then how to avoid it? How to stop it? There is a very simple answer to it. Answer is, go for reforestation meaning wherever you have cut the forest simply reforest that particular area that is the answer to all your problems because deforestation leads to many problems like habitat loss or problems of flooding drought problems of greenhouse gases global warming climate change the problems with your water cycle so many issues come up now if you want to reverse that simply go for reforestation that's the basic solution now, there is one more confusion also among aspirants here, especially the answer to deforestation is reforestation, but you must have also heard of a term called as afforestation. Yes, I would say the answer to deforestation is both reforestation and afforestation because the more the, the, more the quantity of forest on Mother Earth in the biosphere, we will find more and more services, ecosystem services out of this. But there is, there is a difference between reforestation and afforestation. This picture explains you what is the meaning of deforestation. See, deforestation means in the past there was already a standing forest. But because of anthropogenic activities, I have cut down these forests. I have created an agricultural land. I have created a grazing land. I have created some sort of industry. Now, what do I do? Reforestation means on the same land which was the, the forest was cut, I replant the forest. I replant the forest. That is called reforestation. But afforestation is slightly different. Afforestation means in the past, the area where we are planting the forest, it was actually a barren land. That's the basic difference. It was barren land in the past and slowly and steadily, I have created a standing forest here. That's the basic difference. Meaning reforestation means there was already a forest before which was destroyed, which was degraded. Now, I am replanting the plants, I am replanting the trees here and the forest is restored. Whereas, afforestation means a plain land, an area where there was no forest, I create a new forest there. That is the basic difference between the, these two terms, right? That is why I said, what is the answer to deforestation? Of course, reforestation is there, but many a times in our preparation, we do hear about the term afforestation also, reforestation and afforestation. A simple question can be created, 
consider the following statements question 1 definition of reforestation question 2 definition of afforestation option 1 1 only 2 only both 1 and 2 neither 1 nor 2 simple question right if i simply exchange the definition might lead to some confusion among the aspirants so be prepared for this reforestation afforestation no confusion all right right that's the end of today's discussion uh, thank you very much for watching this but do remember if you have liked this video if you want to follow me, you can always follow me on this particular ID at the rate Rahul Sai Triple Two. If you have any queries, any suggestions, complaint, feedback, if you want to connect with me, you can always message me on IG. I do respond on Saturdays and Sundays. Thank you very much for watching this again. Jai Hind.